How's everyone doing? Good. All right, all right, all right. Does everyone have the two sheets that we put at the front, which will be the outline of the questions, and then also the outline, make the scope of the course and the lessons learned with them? Everyone have those two things? Okay, perfect. All right. Everyone have a notebook? Yes. Oh, I have a Everyone have a notebook? Yes. Now I'm just checking, because we're not here to feel good, right? I hear the feel good. All right, my name is Marifa Yaquavi. I'm with League of Intelligence, and I want to say I appreciate everyone coming out. I'm excited that so many people want to learn about African history. I remember last year, I was telling Ms. Marina, Mr. Thayer back there, you know, we had about a solid, what would you say, 15, 20. That was about it, and we would try to spread the word. People were kind of like, eh, African history, how's that going to impact me today? Or yesterday, that was a long time ago, et cetera, et cetera. And I do see a couple of, just real quick, when we rule books, I see one young lady coming in with the Whitney Rule. Who else has the Whitney Rule book? I see, okay, all right, all right. I fully endorse this book, by the way. I just wanted to put that out there. That's why it's separate from the other ones. But we didn't have such a great turnout. Well, actually we did, I can't say that. We did. But compared to today and the response that we were getting on Facebook and the social media, I'm excited about this, man. I, I, I was telling the pastor yesterday, Pastor Williamson, who let us use this uh, fellowship hall, I didn't know we wouldn't have enough seats. And uh, I think, Wow. I mean, I'm, I'm impressed, man. I'm really impressed. And I hope, listen, we're going to give you all our best effort. Great information is coming up. There will be kind of a repeat for a few of you I see in here for some information, but that's all right. We'll keep trucking. And I want to give a special shout out to Mr. Wallace Pruitt. I'm not sure if you all know Mr. Wallace Pruitt. He's an elder in this community. And it was Mr. Pruitt who attached me to Pastor Williamson. And uh, I told him only one time about the program we wanted to put on. And he was gained from the get-go. He was ready to go, and he set, set this whole thing up. Pastor Williamson heard, and he was like, listen, whatever we can do to support the community, we want to do that. Um, so I kind of want to shout them out especially. And also, Brother Keith, we call him Scamp. I'm not sure where he is right now. He's right over there. Yeah, right there. He works at Ball's Pool Rec Center. And when I told him about everything, he jumped on board, too. And he was helping instrumentally putting this together. So y'all give him a round of applause. For the he does great things. All right, we're going to jump right into it. I'm not going to waste too much of your time. We will leave at 8.30. Right? We're going at 8.30. We're at 8. All right, let's go. So we are League of Intelligence. I'll tell you a little bit about us. We've only been in operation for about 13 or 14 months. Um, we basically, we started, our whole purpose is to build, uplift, and repair African-American communities through three ways. Education, networking, and unity. All right, and we call ourselves a League of Intelligence, a lead, because I am, because we are, Ubuntu. We don't believe in one person or two or three people. Go ahead, Brother Tyron, how you doing? All right. Well, two or three people, you know, kind of being in the forefront. Everybody contributes to what we have. So if you want to join us, that would be great. Um, we decided to do this African history class mainly because Charlotte Mecklenburg school systems and school systems across the country do not teach African history, period. They don't teach it. They don't promote it. There's, there's a huge gap with our people relative to where we come from, our origins, our culture, and our history. So League of Intelligence stepped up to fill that gap. Right? I also want to mention that we are at Bruns Middle School, or Academy rather, because it's pre-K through middle school. We actually teach the 6th, 7th, and 8th graders African history. Now, when I talked to Project Lift about this opportunity, they told me they've never seen it in 30 years. I've never seen African history being taught for one year at any of the CMS schools. Anyone here go to CMS schools growing up? Everyone know some child in here? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. 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 What kind of folks? When y'all were at the schools, did they teach anything relative to African history? Not African American, but African history. No, no, no. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> right. So, and, and that's a problem. That's a huge problem. We're going we're gonna to kind of get into it immediately. What's going on, Marcus? And I'm, I'm really informal, so I'm not going to be all up. I shout some people out and talk to them. I love y'all for a family. So we're not going to be all beat. Stuff that will be loose. Everything's going to be good. All right, now. And I'll get back to what we do and everything else in this one second. I just want to kind of get rolling since we're a little behind. Marcus Gardner made this quote right here. Can you guys see that? Some of you have heard this quote before. I take it very serious. A people without the knowledge of their past history, origin, culture, it's like a tree without roots. And we know you take away a tree's roots, the tree dies. Right? You can't get nourishment, you can't get new nutrients, you're not strong, the tree collapses. So if we kind of look at this and then apply that to our situation, relative to African history is not taught, where are our roots? And so 
when you look at our people in our communities, it kind of makes sense based on this right here, why we're struggling as a community across the nation. Can we agree on that? Yes. Right? So what we're going to do, we're going to fix this problem. And we think, and we can tell you, that African history fixes this problem. And it provides us with the history, the origin, and the culture. All right? So we're going to get right into it. Since we don't have our roots, some problems come as a result of that, Mr. Ross. And I've put a couple of them up here right now. This is how America and our own people see us without the history, without the knowledge. This is the, this is the situation we're dealing with right here. You know what I'm saying? All right? So we have identity crisis. We know that's a problem. We have inferiority complexes. Seeing other groups as superior to ourselves, not seeing ourselves in our correct light. We have that type of problem going on. We have self-hate, because we've all seen evidence of self-hate in our communities. We see no confidence, no ambition. And if you look to the right, this is what kind of like what happens. I'll move over here for just a second. If you look to the right right here, this is kind of the scenario right here. Because it goes to that next one, aid into your own demise and self-destruction. This is what happens to our minds as a result of not having our roots. This is what happens right here. This is the diagram, and just that. And we believe that African history again solves this problem. It's going to be the remedy. Also, you see no cultural connection. I've, had, I've heard people say they feel no connection whatsoever to Africa. And given the circumstance, I get it. However, I don't see uh, Europeans say, or Europeans that are in America, Americans saying, I, don't, I can't connect with Europe. I can't connect with France or England or anything like that. Lads, what's going on All right now? So my point is they have a cultural connection, and they're proud of it. Where's ours? And we don't, when we don't have that again, I don't want to reiterate too much, but it's important to see this. This is what's going on right here. So when you see brothers and sisters doing certain things, don't be so quick to bash, right? Be a little more patient because you already know this is what's happening, right? It's not readily apparent, but this is what's going on right here. All right? But we're just kind of going to go through some stuff, right? Kind of going to go through some stuff. So this brother right here, he's an attorney in the Congo, and he was fighting to get this book, which is illustrated right here, banned. The court decided that this was not racism. We don't have to go there. It's obviously, obviously it's racism. But I want to show you something real quick. You see here, if you read this little quick cartoon, this is, this is, this is despicable. Right? This is despicable. And this diagram right here, this is despicable. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. But here's the problem. When you have that when your brain in that diagram, and you start to self-destruct, you actually start to participate in what they do. Mm -hmm. And then you start walking it out. And a lot of times, you're not even aware, like, what's going on in their minds right now? Like, what's, what do you think's happening in here? And this picture, I'm going to leave it up just for a few more minutes. But let's really deal with this. If you look at this scenario right here, this is exactly the narrative all across the country. Not just with us in America, us in Brazil, us in Europe, us in the Asian countries, us in India specifically. This is the scenario when we go to work. Right? Claude Anderson wrote a book. I'll hold it up. Claude Anderson wrote a book. Anybody heard Claude Anderson? Yeah. Perfect. He wrote that book. Y'all know this. Black labor equals white wealth. Do you see it? labor force, when they came and enslaved us, what happened? And so my point right here is, these particular gentlemen, these are solid brothers, but the mind is gone. Remember great debaters? Yeah. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Keep the body, take the mind. And then he says, our job as teachers, as historians and scholars, professors at this university, to help you find, take back, right, and keep your righteous mind. And that's what we want to do with this class. I want to belabor the point. There's another thing they used to do. Anthropologists used to push that African people, melanated people, come are basically in line with apes. You come from apes. You're likened to an ape. There's a whole dehumanizing factor in it, right? We've all seen this before. But again, when you're not knowledgeable of your history and where you come from and your identity has been lost, you start to participate. Right? You start to do things and you don't even know. Brothers can rap, there's no doubt. They have bars. But the identity, they don't even know they're pushing a certain type of image. Yeah. Right? It's more recent. <clears throat> We're going to deal with this picture a little bit too. <laughs> now, see that? What's going on in LeBron's mind right now? Like, what's happening right now? Is he aware of this right here? 
man. And look what they said on the top. Destroy this mad brute. And then there's the ape. And then the brawn right there. I think y'all seen some of these pictures before. Let me see them before. Right. And then if you look on that little stick he has in his hand, it says culture. Culture. And that's exactly the culture that we're in right now. They want to destroy this image right here, and who's like it to this image? Right there. Police shootings, lynchings, and all kind of other stuff that we'll get into over these next few weeks. We'll just jump in there pretty quick right now. On the bottom, enlist U.S. Army. So after all of that, join up. Join up. Get a gun, go to work. And throughout history, we've seen this happen. And I'm not trying to down it right now, but I want to kind of give some context and some scope to how serious the problem is. It's not just African history and you come up and you feel good, right? It's not just some nonchalant information. Oh, we were kings and queens, cool. No, no. If you don't have your roots, this is what happens. This is a small example. I'm sure if we kind of write some stuff down, we all can come up with different scenarios where it's way worse than coming on a magazine cover. Can we agree? Yeah. All right. Brother Glenn, how you doing? All right, good to see you. And then, of course, it affects our children. <clears throat> now they're pushing product based off the image. We're going to sell this stuff. And you look to the left, you see the, 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 the soldier, of course, lining up with the magazine and everything else. Our people aren't seeing it. That's OK. It's all right if you're not seeing it. It's all right. I didn't see it. I've only been in this thing for like four years now. That's it. Before that, I was doing some of the same stuff these brothers and sisters were doing. No doubt. Right? All right. <clears throat> So now, here's what we're going to do with this African history. Marcus Garvey said it the best. We're going to emancipate ourselves from mental slavery, because while others might free the body, none but ourselves can free the mind. And that's exactly what this information does. It's like therapeutic in a sense. It fixes some stuff. Now, there's going to be some uncomfortable moments with this information. It's going to challenge some of the things you were taught or weren't taught. Kind of unlearn what you've learned. Reprogram a little bit. But stick with us. We're asking you to stick with us through this whole journey. All right? And so African history isn't taught. And I think John Clark kind of nailed it on this one. Dr. Clark said powerful people cannot afford to educate the people they oppress. Right? Because once you're truly educated, you won't ask for power anymore. You're going to take it. And that's why we're here. Reason number two or three. I can't remember how many reasons I've given so far. But that's why we're here. Again, we're not here just to feel good. We're not here for that. We're going to take notes. We're going to answer questions. We're going to get into this thing. We're going to make a change, as Michael Jackson said. I'm just being funny. But, <laughs> all right. Here's the next one. And I, want, I need you guys to write this one down. It's the first term. Some of you already know the term, and that's all good. Sankofa, meaning to go back and fetch it. This is part of the history process. We're going to go back, get that wisdom from the past, bring it to the, to the present, and build for the future. Build for the future. It's nice. You need to see, right? Maurice? Uh, there's one chair right there. There's one chair right here. Yeah, yeah. Someone over there? Yeah. And sign in and grab those two yeah. sheets of paper. I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but I don't want you to stand on oh, okay. the time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Y'all got that? Mm -hmm. Not yet? Okay, no problem. Don't be in, let me know when it's 745. Sankofa, go back to fetch it. Got it? Say yeah. yeah. All right, let's do it. Next one. And this is probably the most important one. I wouldn't say most important. Just like, it's a note for Stuart. Can you get it from her? Okay. For the Almas Wilson, he's, wrote, he's written some great books. I think I have like two or three up here. I couldn't bring all my books. But there's, a, there's two of them up there. If our study of black history is really an exercise in feeling good about ourselves, then we'll die feeling good. We must look at the lessons that history teaches us and understand the tremendous value of the study of history for the regaining of power. That's why we're here, right there. The regaining of power. If our education is not about gaining real power, then we're being miseducated and misled. This is why I don't, I'm not going to try to knock African history studies, but when you hear Harriet Tubman, who was on point, right, and some other uh, Frederick Douglass, some other figures, it's not taught in a way that causes us to rise up and take power back. You might feel good on a couple things, right? But that's not what it's designed to do, right? When you study art history, it, it's designed to get power back. Are you with me? All right. I like what the almost good breaks it down. 
Okay, now, that's kind of like our little intro. Yeah, everyone with me? Yep. All right, again, we're Vegan Intelligence. We also have opportunity for sponsors and vendors, and I'll get to that in just one second. Let me go over the time. We do start at 7. I gave y'all a little bit of room today. 7.03, what was it, 7.03? Something about 704, give a little room. It's okay if you're late, just understand that the seats might not be where you want to be. Um, and our duration is 90 minutes, 7 to 8.30, 8.30 sharp. Renee's going to give me the signal at 8.20, and with 10 minutes left, we're going to wind it down, and we'll get you out of here. All right, is that cool? Yeah. All right, we have a sign-in sheet. Did everyone sign the sign-in sheet? It's very important that you sign it. I'm going to get to why in just a few minutes. Mr. Stewart, you need it? Yeah. Okay, don't forget, don't leave without signing it. All right, very important that you sign the sign-in sheet so we know you were here. And that's going to play a part in just a few minutes. I'm going to go over just a couple quick rules right here. Not really rules, but respect and participation. When it comes to the information, like I said, there are going to be uncomfortable moments. I'm telling you. And you're going to be like, that's not now. Nah. You're going to, you're going to, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Please just remain respectful. Somebody might make a comment, and then you feel like that's a, Whatever kind of comment, and then, you know, just, just maintain respect, and we'll, we'll talk it out. It's all good. Also, participation. I want everyone taking notes, writing of some sort, because, you know, there's no way in the world you're going to absorb it all uh, audibly. Is that my saying right? Audibly? Orally? Whatever. You're not going to remember everything when I write it down. There's just no way. All right? So I'm asking you to take notes. This is right here in notebooks. Got the handouts. I have a handout each week with the questions on there to kind of help you remember things. That's why I have to do it. Okay, back to the vendors. Happy Naturals in the corner. Shout out to Happy Natural. All right, we're, we're gonna try to have vendors. Watch out. We're gonna try to have vendors every week. All right. And they also, you know what? I'm gonna mention it now. You guys are also coming up with a bookstore, right? Well, I need. Okay, boom. So 